welcome back for more scary story. In this video, there will be 5 stories with creepy chilling details. The stories are real and personal from Reddit, and if you enjoy these type of content, stick around until the end. The first story was shared by an English tutor. We'll call her Mimi. Mimi, in her early 20s, works as an English tutor in South Korea. One evening a few years ago, she was tutoring a high school boy. They studied late, and the buses stopped running. The boy, being far from home, asked if he could sleep on her floor and take the first bus in the morning. Mimi was reluctant since inviting a teenage male student to stay overnight didn't sound wise. But he begged, and she eventually relented. They returned to her one-room apartment, she got into bed while he laid a blanket on the floor, and they both fell asleep. A few hours later, around 2 a.m., the boy woke Mimi up. I'm really hungry, he said. Let's get some food. Mimi looked at him in disbelief. Food now? It's 2 a.m. Go back to bed, she said. But the student insisted. No, I'm so hungry. Let's eat something now. She told him there was ramen in the kitchen, but he didn't want ramen. He wanted to go to a 24-hour place down the road. After several minutes of persuasion, the boy convinced Mimi to go with him to the restaurant. As soon as they were on the street, the boy turned to Mimi and said, I'm not hungry. I woke up and looked under your bed. There's a man sleeping there. They called the police, who discovered that a homeless man had been living in Mimi's apartment, sleeping under her bed for two months. The boy had only seen him because he was lying on the floor, giving him a clear view under the bed. This second story was shared by a father who was home alone. I was driving a shortcut from 29 Palms, California to Albuquerque, New Mexico. 29 Palms is located in the desolate high desert east of LA. The shortcut was a two-lane road through total nothingness, except for passing through Amboy. Amboy is a nearly abandoned town, nearly as far below sea level as Death Valley. I was driving alone in the afternoon and proceeded up into the mountain range between Amboy and I-40. Once I reached the top, I drove north through a canyon with high grass on both sides of the road. Up ahead, I saw some stuff in the middle of the road. As I approached, I slowed down and saw a Pontiac Fiero stop sideways across both lanes, and two bodies lying face down in the road, a man and a woman. I stopped about 100 feet away, and the hair on the back of my neck stood up. Being a Marine, I reached under the seat, pulled out a 9mm pistol, and chambered a round. Something seemed very wrong. It looked too perfect, as if it were staged for an ambush. As I scanned the road, I saw a path I could drive through. The man was on the left, the woman was behind the Fiero, and the gap was on the right. I dropped the car into first gear, punched the gas, and drove the path I had planned. I passed the back of the Fiero without hitting it or the bodies. I continued a few hundred feet and slowed down to catch my breath and let my heart rate decrease. Looking up into the rearview mirror, I saw the two bodies getting up to their knees, and twenty or so people emerged from the tall grass on either side of the road by the car and bodies. At that moment, my right foot smashed the gas pedal to the floor, and I didn't let up until I had to slow down for the I-40 East on ramp. I will never know what would have happened if I had gotten out of the car to check on the bodies or stopped my car closer to them. This third story came from a fishing experience that left the person horrified. Some friends and I were night fishing on the James River. We were sitting along the shoreline with a nice fire going, accompanied by the usual idle talk and a few beers. Suddenly, everyone just stopped talking, like a switch was flipped off. We all stared across the river, feeling as if something or someone was staring back. It was an uneasy feeling, which some tried to shake off with macho humor. Then, a blood-curdling sound erupted from the other shore, freezing everyone in their tracks. The sound was unlike any I had ever heard, making every hair on my body vibrate and tingle. It sounded like a wild person with no language skills being gutted alive, no words, just a high-pitched, blood-curdling scream. Nobody moved or said a word, we all just sat there, fixed in our stare. Suddenly, a second scream erupted, even more forceful than the first. 
By this time, several of us were sprinting to our trucks, parked a few yards away, to retrieve various firearms. When we got back, we sat quietly with our eyes fixed on the opposite shore, watching the firelight reflecting off the rocks. We waited for another scream or any movement on the other side of the river. Finally, a third scream came, just as suddenly, but this time it was on our side of the river, coming from the bushes about a yard away. We all hightailed it out of there, leaving most of our stuff behind. When we got to our trucks, we heard the scream one more time, just beyond the tree line. We floored it the hell away from there and never found out what made those sounds. Story 4, House Intruder It was a Friday night, and my friend was picking me up from my house. I was in a hurry since we were running late for the hockey game in the city. We were having such a good time at the game that I didn't notice I didn't have my phone. I searched the car, the seat, and the floor, but it wasn't there. I thought I might have dropped it during the hockey game, but I couldn't stop worrying that I had dropped it somewhere. So, I borrowed my friend's phone and ran to the bathroom. I dialed my number, hoping someone at home would pick up. It took three rings before somebody did, but they remained silent on the other end. I yelled into the phone that I was just checking if I had left my phone at home, but they didn't answer. I assumed it was my little brother messing with me, so I hung up. I got home late that night to see that my parents weren't there. I called them to see where they were, and they told me they had gone out to eat and see a concert at the park with my little brother. They said they left soon after I did for the game and should be home in about half an hour. I hung up and proceeded to look for my cell phone. Then I realized, how could somebody in my family have picked up my phone if they hadn't been home? Fear swept over me, and I felt a pain in my stomach. At that moment, I heard the back door to my house open and close. I immediately ran out the front door to the neighbors and called the police. Apparently, the back door had been left open, and someone had simply walked into our house. Nothing was stolen, but the scariest thing is the thought that we could have fallen asleep with a stranger in the house. This last story was shared by a father who was home alone. A while back, a new family moved in next door. They had a son who was deeply disturbing. He was obsessed with slasher movies and constantly wanted me to recount graphic details from my time in Vietnam, things no normal person would want to hear. He also enjoyed tormenting stray animals. This guy was a real whack job. He was 19 at the time, and my daughter was only 7, but he always tried to talk to her. He'd strike up conversations with her when she walked home from school and talk over the fence when she was playing in the backyard. What really set me off was when he called our house, asking to speak with her. That was the final straw. I went over, flipped out at him, and told his parents to keep him away from her. I made it clear I never wanted to see him again. That's when things got weird. My daughter was always a bit imaginative and paranoid. She often thought there were monsters under her bed, so when she said there was something living in her closet that scared her at night but wasn't there during the day, we dismissed it as no big deal. A few weeks later, my wife and daughter were having a girls' night at my mother's house. I turned on HBO and watched some movies, eventually falling asleep downstairs around 2 a.m. Suddenly, I got a call from my neighbor, the one with the creepy son. They told me their son was missing. They had seen me awake and thought I could help look for him. The call woke me up, but I asked why they thought I was awake. They said they saw me walking around upstairs and the light was on. My blood ran cold. I had been passed out on the couch, and no one had turned any lights on. I hung up, ran outside to grab my shotgun from my truck, but noticed the sheriff pulling up to my neighbor's house. I rushed over and told them someone was in my house. I could see the lights on in my daughter's room and a silhouette pacing back and forth. The deputies went in and found the neighbor boy waiting in my daughter's room with a setup in her closet. He said he liked to watch her sleep in the moonlight. Subscribe.